This man w- wishes Edge and Christian luck tonight against the brother- Brothers of Destruction. And then he sits down <laughs> with a two-man power trip. And this blew my mind. Because it is time to go scorched earth on Matt and Jeff Hardy. It's not enough. Everything they've done in the ring over the past two or three shows, whatever it's been, to just establish over and over and over and over and over and over again that the Hardy is not in their level. Now they've been beaten. They've been shunted off to who knows where. They're not even on the show. But Hunter and Austin and Vince must all sit down, watch the replay from Monday, and laugh at them. Oh, here comes Matt to make the save. Oh, that wasn't much of a save of it all. Look at these goofs. Why do they think they could get in the ring with us? I, 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 my, my jaw is hanging open. I mean, we've established this. Nitro's dead. WCW's dead. And these same guys have been on top of this show forever. Rock's making a movie. Foley's gone. It's been Hunter and Austin and Taker and Kane for years now. Years and years now. It's been these four guys on top. And rather than try to find anything new, anything fresh to be done with anyone else to make new matches, they set about to make the divide between those four and everyone else as vast as possible. To bury the entire roster at the expense or the, the, the benefit of the guys who are already over. It's, it's, it, I, I was <laughs> flummoxed watching all this. Well, Vinny, you shouldn't be because that's the only thing that he knows. I guess to so. To keep pushing the old guys. Do you realize that... If there had never been a WCW and an Eric Bischoff to actually hire people away, or if there would never been a steroid scandal where a bunch of big jacked up dudes end up having to be fired or quit, God only knows if they would have even survived the 90s, for crying out loud. So what, what happened was they went public, and they got a lot of money, and TV started paying really well, and so they've just been shitty for the next 19 years, unable to create any new stars. It's like the same people keep coming back. Fucking Ric Flair... Ric Flair turned on Christian in the main event of Raw in 2020 to allow Randy Orton to win. (laughs) I'm not making this up. Yes. Fuck. The JVC blast of the night is Kane chokeslamming Rhino, but then getting jumped by the two-man power trip in the opening segment of this year's very show. Slow week. Yes. And then Edge and Christian versus Undertaker and Kane. And it's no DQ, so it's just effectively a three-on-two with Rhino out there also. So as a wrestling match, in a vacuum, this is a pretty good TV match. Absolutely. But again, it goes back to what I was talking about earlier. There's four guys who are over. And we've seen them all fight each other a thousand times. And rather than try to do anything new with anyone else, they're going out of their way to make you think... The gap between those four guys and everyone else can never be overcome. Kane selling his arm during this match was awesome. His arm was all taped up. They hit it with chairs earlier. I was, I always wondered how this could be Filthy Tom's favorite wrestler. And tonight I finally understood. Oh, Kane in this age was great. 2000, 2001 Kane was so great. Kane's always been. I don't know if I can say great. Great this guy. Era, this era of Kane, I will He's say. He's always been era, a good hand. This era of Kane was great. And much, much better than I realized at the time. It's funny that you say hand because he did not use his left arm at all, even doing a power slam. He wasn't using his left arm on anything. He was selling it the whole time like a champ. Well, awesome. my my takeaway from this match, just to be that guy... Jesus, God. It's a no-DQ match. Rhino just stands outside. Okay. He, he gores Kane for the heat, and then he goes outside again. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck, just stay in the ring, dude. Yeah. These guys are standing on the apron like shitheads waiting for a tag in a no-DQ <laughs> match. I'm like, fuck. Dude, I just mentally check out. When shit like this happens, I mentally check out. No DQ tag match with tags and a dude interfering only regularly. Oh, yeah, make sure the ref's not watching in this no DQ match while I gore this fucker and then slide back out of the ring. I'm like, go away. Either either do a match, or if it's no DQ and you want people to interfere, just fucking have them in the whole match, in the whole time. Otherwise, I feel dumb watching it. I don't like that. I feel dumb enough normally. Write that down, everybody. So all that said, 
Kane was something for a long time after they eventually cut. There was, it was one armed Kane beating up three heels for a long time, which, mm-hmm. which f- feeds into both things I talked about earlier. How great psychology for this match and terrible long term build to make any credible challengers to the top guys. So eventually they get heat on Kane after Rhino Gores him, and they're working him over for a long time. And Taker makes his big comeback. The place is going crazy. Kane is fighting with Rhino outside and gives him a choke slam on the ramp. Now. Oh. Kane's a pro, and he did this as carefully as possible, but there was no point to that. It did not even happen in any way for any reason. And he didn't even choke slam him going up the ramp. He choke slammed him coming down the ramp. Yes. So yeah. he had well, farther to fall. Yeah, and you know, yeah, he had his back turned then to the entranceway, so Hunter and Austin could jump in from behind. Right. So Hunter and Austin beat up Kane. They are there to beat up Kane. They don't care about this actual match itself. They want to just attack Kane. Which means, as T- Kane is being attacked on the floor, Taker is left alone with Edge and Christian in the ring. He ducks a concerto. He, I don't know what happened to Edge. He pins Christian with the last ride. Taker and Kane are your new world tag team champions. Austin and Hunter made no attempt to, to stop this pin. Crowd went nuts. The crowd went eight. Dude, this shit. crowd went absolutely. They were so happy to see a happy ending. We got the very first That's, line yeah. of Roland, which I think is just the word Roland. And then the heels immediately jumped him. Yeah. Right. They beat the shit out of him again. Yes. And then they played Steve Austin's music, Top Heel. <laughs> I was like, of course they did. Yeah. I talked about the the numbers a few weeks ago, but they are running off fans in fucking droves right now. And I watched this show, and it's just heat, 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 heat. So whoop de doo. Yes, Austin and Hunter beat up Taker. Kane eventually chases them away with a chair. It's completely forgotten that Kane and Undertaker are now the World Tag Team Champions because the World Tag Team Championship belts exist only as a stepping stone to then get a match against the real stars of the show, the two-man power trip. Right. <laughs> I don't know, man. I've, this is the worst show I ever saw, but God, I was in a bad mood when it was done. Well, get used to it, bro. <laughs> it ain't turning years. around anytime soon. No. It is not turning around anytime soon.